Hmm. Paul, you came from the Rhodes University School of Painting, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And it was a quite yeah. well-known school for, for landscape painting. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they, they sort of came very much out of that um, that sort of English tradition of landscape painters, that sort of rural um, tradition that sort of venerate, you know, that sort of artists like Turner and Constable and then um, sort of later on in the 20th century, the early 20th century um, kind of social realist painters. Um, and they also had, I mean, the thing about that art school is it had a very uh, traditional um, approach to things that was very much based on sort of the Royal College of Art. Um, you know, it basically comes out of the 19th century, uh, the Victorian approach of actually drawing costs, and which even when I went into the art school in the 70s was extremely antiquated then. And people at, say, Michaelis Art School, which was always the sort of hotbed of um, modernity in South Africa, and we were doing conceptual art. They couldn't believe that people in this little town were doing such anachronistic things as, you know, doing cost drawing and stuff like that. Um, but in retrospect, I'm very, I was very happy with, with doing that grounding. And in fact, um, I've sort of become a bloke who's interested in keeping those sorts of things alive. I don't know, for some reason, you know, so I like watercolour and, you know, like really classic sort of traditional drawing. Um, those things interest me. Um, and I'm more interested in, I've sort of taken a longer view of art. I, you know, as an art student, you're very influenced by, by kind of the fashionable in art. And that doesn't interest me very much anymore. I'm, I'm like, I relate very strongly to um, 19th century painting in England and France. Um, and so, I, you know, and, and as, as sort of as you get older, you kind of, things that happened 200 years ago don't seem that long ago, really, in some weird way. <laughs> Um, but I mean, there is another, the, I don't really know what, you know, as you confront your own sort of total irrelevance, um, which has always been the thing with painting, because it is kind of, um, you know, it's, it's importance in society for me has diminished over the years. Um, I mean, compared to when painting was, you know, before we had television and then social media painting was the visual medium um, and it was very, very important and you know the whole institutional structure around painting and I don't think we know what to do with art in the modern world because we have an incredible amount of imagery that is moving and that is mobile and then here there are these static things from the past what do you do with them? Why do why carry on making them? <laughs> yeah, so it, it, it becomes a, a, a medium of investigation as opposed to a medium of aesthetics. Or, or either or, yeah. it becomes really aestheticized or a medium of investigation. Yeah, yeah. because it's, its role as a documentary thing, which is, you know, absolutely what it used to be, is completely irrelevant now. Obsolete. Um, obsolete, yeah. So, but there's a certain freedom in that, you know, also. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I also, yeah, I, I think for me, you know, I, I still draw and paint every day. Um, I don't necessarily have like a grand project that I'm working on at the moment. But I, you know, every day I go and I draw and I paint, or I, whatever, I go outside and I draw and I paint, or I go for a drive and I stay in my car and I draw or paint or whatever. And um, it's just a very, very, you know, if, if you start to think of it as 
because it's a very specific way of engaging with um, what you're seeing, and it takes, you know, it takes a certain amount of concentration, um, and it's not immediate. It's more complex, and it's more. I find it very relaxing. Basically, it's very. It's kind of mindful mm -hmm. to use a sort of a modern, trendy word. <laughs> um, whereas um you know i don't know I'm taking photographs with your phone because we also attach to these devices all the time we're on them and we're addicted to them mm. um and it's not that it's something very different to that and i find if i i find it i, I mean i find this is you know that's distraction that's what that is mm. and painting for me and drawing is the opposite of that it, it requires full immersion yeah, yeah. I mean, that was something that 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 struck me in in the landscape was that I mean, it takes one twenty fifth of a second to take a photograph, you know, yeah. in the in the space. Obviously, there's yeah. a lot of planning and there's a lot of this and a lot of setup, and then you process because I was shooting on film and you process the yeah. film and then you look at the negatives and then nah, 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 there's all of that work. But that was what yeah. was, what else which was really exciting about doing the light studies and the studies of shifting light was to immerse myself in the landscape and to feel yeah. and be there. And there's something for me, there's something radical that happens at three o'clock in the afternoon with the light. It yeah, changes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and that, that experiential knowledge is something that takes a long time to digest and and then yeah. to translate. Yeah, because when you you're not really connecting with it in a you know, if you I don't know, because I like you take people on the beach, so so people get onto the beach and then they, you know, and then out come the photographs and then we'll take it in and whatever. Here we are on the beach, um, or wherever you are. Um, but you're not really if you you're not like okay, it's a beautiful sunset or it's a beautiful day, but you're not really connecting with it on a. It's a very superficial engagement with what's actually happening, and and that's what you were sort of breaking down when you're sitting there actually for a long, long time. So you start to realize that things happen a lot, lot slower than they do for us. Yeah, you know, it's like, oh, mm. um, and I think just that realization on its own is pretty useful. I noticed somebody sort of watching my work in a in a gallery once. So I I I I, I intentionally shifted it at a at a long period. It's because I knew people yeah. would miss it for that exact reason. And yeah. um, and so I remember somebody, people generally just like looked, got irritated, bored, whatever, photographed behind light, whatever, moved on. Yeah. And then yeah. a young art a young art student was in the space and she looked at it and she looked away and Ash looked back, she realized it shifted. And she stopped and she sat in front of the work. She sat, she watched it for 45 minutes. Wow. And yeah. I was just like, oh, yay, one person, tick, yay. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My job here is done. 